Hello everybody, Anthony is here. In this tutorial I will talk about the, my approach to voxel height which uh, I used to create this particular board, uh, robot rocket board. And I will go even a bit more deeper into the like hardcore, like, hard surface, <laughs> hardcore profiling in 3D code. Uh, just using this voxel height is the main tool uh, well, I did a lapse of how I created this um, profile, part of the leg or, or arm. I will go over the time lapse and I'll talk about how I made it. I usually find that uh, it's easier for me to do the actual work and then talk over it. Otherwise, I try to record and model at the same time, but unfortunately, I just uh, can't really do, can't really achieve anything good design-wise if I do it simultaneously. And I'll share the uh, link in the description to this piece. Uh, if you go and like it, I'll be really grateful. A bit of an attention hole, like all artists are. So I'll, I'll be happy. Alright, so I start with the ball, just a basic sphere, and I use the cut tools to get the rectangular shape. And I'm dealing with this fairly low polygon right now, about 300,000 triangles, you can see it at the bottom. So I'm trying to, I, I want to get a round, rounded top. So just trying to find an angle and thickness. So I'm pressing shift and I'm like um, hiding everything up for the that circle and then I, I hide the bottom then I duplicate the layer and uh, do the same uh, you know, operation hiding uh, at the bottom part and then extruding that further down just to get some kind of shape it's not just um, you know rectangle to rectangle so I'm, uh, now I'm just starting to use the walk side tool and I just trying to define the shape and that would satisfy me really. And by the way, if you're like if you are puzzled why do you duplicate the layer every time, essentially the delete hidden button doesn't really work that well inside through the code. And you can get some residual hidden polygons uh, when you change the resolution of the object, for example. So I found that you know if you duplicate the layer, then it really deletes the hidden polygons for good. That's why you'll see me duplicating and duplicating every time when I consider I'm finished with with hiding, you know, with hiding of particular parts. That also allows you to have a backup uh, design so in your stack, in your layer stack. So that's like I've got my basic shape right now with major holes and all that. I'm trying to cut through, uh, you know, find some interesting cuts. So when I deal with a bit lower polygon, though it's not that low, about 1 million right now, but it still gives you somewhat um, uh, softened edges, somewhat soft edges, which I'm all right with. Some people don't like it. Some people want really sharp stuff. Uh, really tricky to get in 3D code. So I'm always rotating the model, trying to evaluate it and see what I can do. And you can see the like, tubular part, uh, cylindrical part in front. You're starting to get some pretty cool uh, shapes there. I'm doing the back of that. Oh, yeah, now I'm doing that one. And, you know, how complex is that really that's 
pretty tricky to create that fast with any other design tool I know, including ZBrush. I put a hole and I didn't like that hole. Just thinking what can I add more. I prefer to deal with the, um, I really like the materials in 3D code. So every time you pick the metal material, it looks more or less like metal. I press F5 to turn on the uh, uh, shadows. Unfortunately, when you go like over a certain margin, like if you have more than uh, 2 million triangles on my computer at least, and you turn on the shadows and real cast lighting, then it gets really slow. Uh, some materials are a bit more performant than the others, so metal is probably one of the worst. So in the end of the day, I usually turn on and off the lighting just to validate the design and uh, then I turn it off to carry on. So now I've got to the point where I made a major cut in the middle. And you will see me later that I will reuse one of the backup layers to add an internal structure inside the uh, inside the model. Essentially, your backup layers are your like a safety grid in terms of if somebody wants to uh, get some, somebody wants to modify a model or you want to modify a model you want to fix something then you still have that original design original block out that you can boolean in or boolean and combine with the um, is your main part and you will see me doing it so you can see I do a lot of like blind walks unhiding. I'll go to the side of the view and then I will unhide it and then I check it out how it looks and then it's a bit of a like second guess, second guessing there. So I wanted to do this kind of extrusion here. That's why I had to pretty much hide the whole block and then unhide the parts. It takes some time, you know, to get your mindset into this um, hide unhide. A capacity you, you like uh, you think about you can think about like you try to cache all your changes then you go back and ch unchange it uh, that comparison is at all so I'm pretty happy about that extrusion I'm just trying to figure out a better better shapes that uh, will look more interesting from the side I started to try different materials just to see how it looks with the white uh, material on or white clay on. I have some older materials from previous versions from 3 Coast, so they look like blown out, uh, blown out, super bright stuff. It's just uh, coming from the version like 4.8.8, .8, stuff like that. So I've got uh, depth turned on on the height tool. That's why you can see it doesn't go the whole distance, but uh, only a little bit. I do have it on and off uh, quite often, the depth limit. And you can see here, I've decided to start, uh, start st started to cut out the model from the side. It's a more interesting look. Try to do it at the back, but there wasn't enough material there to work with. So I eventually abandoned that idea. I'm still trying to do it here, but yeah, 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 I don't like it. Oof, uh, undid it. I 
I did that cut. I think that's my my favorite cut at the top. Uh, that rounded thing look the most badass cut out of all of them. All right, now I decided to cut through again, cut through through the side. That will get a really rich uh, silhouette for the whole metallical uh, metallic profile. So I cut from the side, but then I unhide from the middle, so I can get more intricate shapes. Like I, I, and hide from the front view. Certain parts. So you always uh, you always navigate to left, front, back, top, bottom, and uh, you know, unhide from different positions. I think uh, this is the kind of the moment where I got the most inter interesting shapes out. In some smaller bits and parts. So essentially, in 3D code, you usually don't have enough resolution to get a like a, a, a bold insertion. You know, something like that small is really tricky to get right, uh, just because of the resolution. You, you, unless you put this part to like 20 million polygons, and but if you think about it, if you have a robot that consists of like 20 or 30 parts like that, each one is 20 million, you just... Uh, maybe in 10 year time I'll be able to do something like that, but right now it's just uh, it's too limiting to do anything like that. So I have to stick to the fairly low tra uh, triangle count and voxel count. And I already started doing stuff like uh, picking this model and dropping it into ZBrush to add smaller details, because live bullets in ZBrush uh, uh, Work, work pretty well when you have the original design on, and you can just need, if you just need to add a, like a bolt or some stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, it's just because I still can't really design. Well, not that I even tried properly. I I really like speed in ZBrush. I can't do has, uh, designs that as fast as I can do it in 3D code. So I'd rather do designs here and then do some finishing touches in ZBrush. So I just add these kind of points where the, I could imagine some type of bolts or cuts being. From the distance, it will still, uh, you know, it still will register as a bolt cut, you know, something like that. And uh, don't have to be too picky about what you do. Oh, well, of course, it depends on them. On the client, but if you're doing a concept design, sometimes even this is uh, you know, a kill. Like I had a client when I just um, like if you wanna, uh, I decided to add more details to his uh, project. Uh, that I was doing. So essentially, the we started. Out, we, he wanted to see a model that would just be a rough, uh, like approximation of the final one, so he could pass the rough concept to somebody else. But I ended, I ended up doing the whole thing, and it was good enough to be baked for the game. You know, it was a mobile game, so that's why it was like mobile. You know, like triple A game, you know, but in mobile terms. Uh, so it it, it does, didn't have to be as polished as some kind of Destiny um, mech. That's why all this kind of insertions, so just rectangular holes, were good enough. Okay, so um, right now what I'm doing, I'm I go to my backup copy, backup layer, and I started to. Uh, 
I, I hid the whole thing inside the lair and I started to unhide some structures inside just to add some uh, more intricate details inside of it. So I isolated the lair and I started to clean up the whole thing. And then I go and do the cuts. And to be honest, I would do a bit more work on that, on the inner structures. The, but I decided that that's good enough. Then just uh, bullying combine it with the uh, the model and go to find this. Yeah, guys, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.